The land for me, what it means to me is this deep-rooted connection. As a Dinette person, I have a lot of history connected to Grand Staircase. Grand Staircase Escalante National Monument is not a national park. It was this brilliant and visionary idea of setting aside national monuments on BLM land, Bureau of Land Management land, and having them be managed by the BLM. We want to protect that whole landscape for its remoteness, for its wildness, and so there's a reason for Grand Staircase to be as big as it is from that management perspective. We're trying to manage a big chunk of land that connects all of these other pieces of protected lands. Grand Staircase Escalante was the first of these big national monuments that became the National Conservation Land System, all the way from the Greater Grand Canyon up the Colorado to Canyonlands, and really you can start following protected lands all the way up to Yellowstone. I want my ancestors to know that I'm back, that I'm here, and I'm here to help in any way that I can. I ran in through this canyon. I said, I'm here. I'm your daughter. I'm standing here and I hear you. And that was emotional because I could hear how much she's hurting. As we head into a changing climate, we know that there's gonna be less rain, that the temperatures are gonna go up. You know, this is a changing landscape. It's not the timeless desert, it is a dynamic place. Average rate of climate change is about a quarter mile per year. That comes out to about four feet or so uh, per day. The species would have to track their preferred climate niche. We are not getting more wildlands, more wilderness, more open space. We're getting less, and what we have is severely threatened in many places, especially in the West. Our kids and our grandkids are never going to tell us the monument's too big. They're going to tell us the monument was too small. It's a massive piece of land, 1.9 million acres. It has so many different ecosystems, elevations, and geographies, and topographies. We are able to look at the ways that a lot of different ecosystems, a lot of different plants and animals adapt to their world and to a changing climate. Areas, especially in a desert, where we have these uh, riparian corridors are extremely important for allowing species to move and migrate and find new habitat. It's extremely topographically diverse. Lots of different habitats and ecosystems very close to each other, interacting with each other. It's the most species-rich, protected place in Utah. I tend to think of biodiversity as almost like a measure of ecosystem resilience to climate change. The more species that you have in a given place, it's better able to adapt to disruptions. I think of Grand Staircase Escalante as kind of an arc. And as we move into the future, we're going to have this incredible protected landscape within the monument boundaries that's big enough for species to survive. We don't know what we don't yet know. and. The things that we can learn and the things that we can understand from landscapes like this, we don't know it all yet. So why not protect it? Why not preserve it? co-management model is not looking at tribal governments and tribal people as like a box to check off, but rather looking at the tribal nations as a partner. It's important to protect not only for the environmental standpoint of it, but also for the spiritual standpoint. As a descendant of this nation, it is important to me to continue on with our traditional and cultural values and to learn how to maintain our ancestral landscape for future generations. This different perspective from Indigenous knowledge is I'm hoping brings this alliance with other agencies and also throughout the state and that's what my hope is. Because of its size and its current boundaries, uh, we're able to work with all of our partners on one cohesive landscape. I'm really lucky I get to take a lot of volunteers out on the monument to connect to the landscape and grow a relationship through the act of service. It's just so cool to watch kids respond to the natural world. They ask questions and they remain astonished by every little thing that they see. They're so much more engaged when they can touch things and see things for themselves. It's really easy to become disengaged from our world 
And part of that disengagement is because we are not being in it. We are and should think of ourselves as a part of the world instead of apart from the world. I think that's really important. It seems incumbent upon us as the species that is the most capable of hurting these landscapes. We should start protecting them. Part of Hopi way of thinking is also about reciprocity and respect and stewardship. You need clean air, clean water, and land to survive, and so the earth takes care of us, so we take care of the earth.